My name is Bree Berry. I'm from Marietta, Georgia. My name is Katie Zhang. Uh, I've lived in Suwannee, Georgia. Uh, my name is Dylan Lovin. I'm from Lawrenceville, Georgia. Um, my name is Anna Bunker, and I'm originally from Barnesville, Georgia. I'm interested in medicine primarily because of my parents. My, both of my parents were dentists, so they were probably one of the biggest factors in me choosing to be a doctor. For the first time I thought I might want to go to medical school was um, I was 13. My mom is a family care physician. I mean, when we were kids, we used to go up to her office and like run around the halls and stuff, things we were not supposed to do. I was very interested in surgery uh, prior to applying to med school. Um, I think a lot of that came from TV shows and talking to other surgeons. It just seemed like a really fascinating uh, profession. I've been struggling in anatomy lab. The first day that I was in lab, I didn't like anything. I, I looked and I had to focus on breathing and not passing out and not throwing up. Um, and so the first gross anatomy session was a little bit rough for me. On Saturday we had our white coat ceremony and the faculty actually gave us our first white coats um, and it's a very symbolic event. It, it signifies our I guess, acceptance into the rank of medical professional. I really enjoyed the white coat ceremony. Guys, it is traditional and important to make a lot of noise. So. <laughs> My first thought was, I'm really nervous that I'm not going to put my hand in the right sleeve and it's going to be really embarrassing. That was my first thought. Having sort of that moment of recognition that you, know, you made it through this first part of medical school and um, knowing that my family was there to support me, um, it was a, I really enjoyed it. It was a good moment. We have certain professors who focus on certain aspects of medical knowledge. Upward, outward, and backward posterior. And you can sort of gently insert the speculum. Basically, you sort of make it vibrate, and it can be on the vertex or in front of the forehead. There are different, I've seen different ways of doing it. I've always the other preceptor is a clinician, which helps us um, all the clinical questions like how to deal with patients, how to read an x-ray, how to do a physical exam, stuff like that. Our smaller groups, we have um, clinical skills groups of four students, and within those groups with our single clinician back on the preceptor, we will discuss certain techniques of how to approach certain issues with patients and how to talk to patients on different level. Oh, please practice. Uh, once space medicine or surgery. Yeah, I had a point of focus to surgery once in high school. Yeah. And they do some medicine too. He was doing a septum. He was like, please. Hey, five the position. Like, right. Say, ah. Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, and that would give me an after. Uh, uh, patient uh, communication uh, skills uh, that are really important to being a doctor and not just going to histology or anatomy class every day. These are our partners, the Athens Community Council on Aging, the Athens Nurses Clinic, Early Head Start and Head Start, Nucci Space, and the UGA University Health Center. My number one preference was the Athens Nursing Clinic. Next we're going to move on to the Athens, Athens Nurses Clinic with Paige Cummings. Um, I'm from the Athens Nurses Clinic and before you heard we were coming here today, how many of you had ever heard of the Athens Nurses Clinic? We are a medical home base. We are a safety net free clinic for medically indigent people in Athens, Clark County and actually the 10 county area around us. We serve people <coughs> who earn up to 200% of the poverty level. Over half of our patients tell us they have no income at all. The head of the clinic came and spoke to our class and told us that she wanted us to work on a smoking cessation project. But I ended up choosing the Athens Nurses Clinic because I thought that 
smoking cessation was something that we're all going to have to deal with in the future. No matter who your patients are, some of them will be smokers and part of your job will be to get them to quit. And also, I just really thought that it'd be a cool an interesting patient population to work with because they have such a need for our, our time and help there because the, the staff is so overworked and um, they just need help. Well, this semester the project is just to define the problem. So right now we're trying to we're going through charts to try to determine. So, so five right now. Now. So that's like a third attack. Have they like rooms? Chip and I specifically are going through the charts that um, were not in the system beforehand, and we are we are entering instead of just entering like a little bit of information, um, we're having to do like everything about their name, okay. their um, like how old they are, if they have kids, that kind of thing. and hopefully our data will be useful for the nurses <laughs> clinic later. Um, I so far from what I've seen, I think the clinic is really doing a great job with. Um, the resources that they have. Oh, they, nice. don't, they don't have computerized files. Oh, that's Shelby. Um, they don't have a very large space and they, they're in a very old building. Um, this is our, our GYN and our dirty exam room. Our second dental room. And this is our laboratory. Um, blood sugars, we can do finger stick hemoglobins, we can do pregnancy tests, we can do uh, H. pylori, that's stomach bacteria test, we can do strep test, monospots, all the basic acute care clinic issues, we can, we can do those testing here. And our uh, chart room, we keep all of our over-the-counter medications here so that we can dispense those to our clients. And I think it's more important that they're serving a population that will not get medical care unless they come to this clinic. I expected medical school to be hard, obviously, but I definitely didn't expect it to be this hard. I don't, I don't think there's much that can prepare you for um, going to class for eight hours a day and then having to study for eight hours a day after that. So it's definitely been a challenge, but the things that are most challenging are the most beneficial in the long run. And if you're passionate about something, then I think you're more happy that it's a challenge. It's more worthwhile if you pursue that. And I don't think I've changed too much over the last month. Um... I mean, I think honestly, over these first two years when we're just learning basic science, I bet I won't feel a lot of changes in terms of attitude until we get some real clinical experience in the third year, maybe. Um, but I feel very much the same as when I first started now, just a little sleepier.